Circuit theory and Ohm's law are two important concepts we need to understand in order to conduct the needed calculations in designing an AV solution. We use circuit theory to understand the relationships between power, current, resistance, and voltage. Then we use Ohm's law to calculate that difference. Let's dive into these concepts a little further. Think for a moment about a basic electrical circuit. There are always three things in a functional electrical circuit. We have a source, we have a conductor, and we have a load. This electrical circuit has a closed loop path, which means the electrons flow from the power source through a load and back to the power source. The electrons then cannot continue through this circuit if at any point the loop is broken. This would not be a complete circuit if the switch was flipped to the open state. So how do the terms power, current, resistance, and voltage apply to my electrical circuit? Power can be defined as the result of the application of voltage, current, and resistance combined. Current can be defined as the rate of the flow of electrons, and resistance is the opposition to the flow of electrons. Why would I need opposition to the electrons if I want power? In AV, I would want to make sure I don't send too many electrons to my load at once, otherwise things might explode. So, you know, there's that. If power is the result of voltage, current, and resistance, then it would make sense that if current increases and resistance stays the same, that power increases. And if voltage increases and the resistance stays the same, power also increases. Let's take a look at the analogy of a pump station. Here. Gravity provides the force, or voltage, to move the water. The size of the pipe provides the resistance, so a smaller pipe would equal more resistance and a larger pipe would mean less resistance. And the flow of the water gives us the current. Notice, though, something is missing with this analogy. The water just flows right out of the pipe and falls straight to the ground, not returning to the source. Here is a more proper analogy. For water to flow, I need a source of energy, the pump. The pipe is the conductor. The hose is the load or resistance to the water flow. The valve represents the closed contact switch. Water will only flow through the pipe if there is a difference in pressure at both ends. This difference is supplied by the pump. High pressure at the output, low pressure at the input. A three-quarter inch diameter hose allows more water to flow than a half or five-eighths inch garden hose. Similarly, Given the same diameter, a longer hose has more resistance to the flow of water than a shorter hose. Don't forget the pipe itself, like wire, also has resistance. Now this is a complete analogy with a closed loop system as like the electrical circuit. Now in these examples, we are considering only a series circuit. In AV, we want to also be aware of the parallel circuit. All this changes is the circuitry adds more avenues for the electrons to get back to the source. Current flows via all paths back to the source, but the greatest amount of current flows through the path of least resistance. Another element worth considering in this explanation is the difference between a DC circuit versus an AC circuit. A DC circuit has the electrons flowing from one direction and back around to the source, whereas an AC circuit has the electrons switching directions, sometimes going backwards then forwards. In the most generic sense, the calculations considering AC or DC circuits are the same. So where might I need all this information in the real AV world? An example could be that I might need to design and configure the proper circuitry for a loudspeaker install, or I need to calculate how much power my AV rack solution needs, and for this, let's look at Ohm's law. Ohm's law describes how this electricity behaves in a DC circuit environment. Ohm's law also applies to AC circuits, but there are other factors that need to be addressed. Ohm's law is used to calculate and predict the four properties, power, current, resistance, and voltage. Let's dissect this, and to do that, we're going to visit Cartoon Tom's house. This is the formula wheel that we use to solve for electrical equations involving power, current, resistance, and voltage. And the symbols that we're going to see for this, we see P for power, we're going to see I for current, we're going to see R for resistance, and V for voltage. The other symbol that you may see for voltage is going to be E, which stands for electromotive force. So for voltage, depending on what text you read, you can see either V or E. Now the way that we use this, if I know any two things about a circuit, 
I can discover the rest using the formula wheel. For example, if I want to discover how much power is being consumed in the circuit, and I know the current and the resistance, well, I look in the upper left quadrant here, and I can take current squared times the resistance of the circuit, and that will give me the power. If I know the voltage and current, I can take the voltage and multiply that times the current. If I know the voltage and resistance, I can take the voltage squared and divide that by the resistance. So that's the upper left quadrant for power. If I want to solve for current, I'm going to take the upper right quadrant, and here are my formulas for solving for current. If I want to know what the resistance is in the circuit, I'll take the lower right quadrant here, and I'll look at those formulas. If I want to solve for voltage, I'll look at the lower left quadrant, and I can take a look at the values there. Now, are you going to need to memorize the entire formula wheel in your day-to-day -day work or for the CTS exam? No. Let's make this a little simpler, and let's just deal with Ohm's law here at first. The way to do this is just VIR. That is basic Ohm's law. And the way that we do this is I'm going to put my finger over the value that I want to solve for. So let's say I want to solve for voltage. So I'm going to put my finger over the V, and what does that look like? That looks like I times R. Current times the resistance. If I want to solve for the current, I put my finger over the I, and that looks like voltage divided by resistance. If I want to solve for the resistance, put my finger over the R, and that gives me voltage divided by current. So if I can remember VIR, just put your finger over the value that you want to solve for. That will give me the formula for the rest of it. Let's do three quick little examples here. Let's say I want to solve for voltage. So voltage equals I times R. And the current, the I, is going to be 2 amperes worth of current and 8 ohms worth of resistance. That's going to give me 16 volts. Let's say I want to solve for current. That's going to give me the voltage divided by the resistance. And let's say we have a voltage of 120 volts and a resistance of 20 ohms. 120 divided by 20, that's going to give me 6, so 6 amperes worth of current. Let's do one more. Let's say I want to solve for resistance. That's going to be voltage divided by current. Let's go with 120 volts again, and this time the current is going to be 3 amperes worth of current. So 120 divided by 3, that is going to be 40 ohms worth of resistance in the circuit. So VIR, Put your finger over the value, and you can solve for the rest of Ohm's law. We can also do something similar with power as it's related to Ohm's law. And sometimes we know this is as, it's as easy as pi. P equals I times E. And we'll write this out just like we did VIR a moment ago. P I E. If I want to solve for power, put my finger over the P. Just like we had a moment ago, P times E, easy as pi. If I want to solve for the current, the power divided by the voltage. If I want to solve for the voltage, power divided by the current. Let's do three quick, quick little examples with this. Let's say I want to solve for power, and I'm going to do current times the voltage. The current, let's say it is... 0.25 amperes worth of current, and let's say it's 120 volts. So 2.25 times 20, 0.25 times 120, rather, power there consumed in the circuit would be 30 watts. Let's do another one. Let's do current. So that's going to be power divided by voltage, and let's say the power is 45 watts being consumed in the circuit. And again, we'll do 120 volts, so 45 divided by 120, and then hit the Enter key down at the lower right. This tells me that we are drawing 0.375 amperes worth of current. And let's do one more. Let's do a voltage. So voltage equals power divided by current. And let's say the power being consumed in the circuit is 480 watts. The current draw is 2 amperes worth of current. So 480 divided by 2 tells us that the voltage in this circuit 
would be 240 volts. Besides VIR and PIE, there's actually one other formula that you should commit to memory that you'll use on a practical basis. And this would be in the lower right quadrant, resistance equals voltage squared divided by power. Now, realistically, we're not going to be doing with loudspeakers, and we're going to use that as an example, we're not going to be doing resistance. We're actually calculating for impedance. Obviously, this is not going to calculate for impedance. What this is going to do is it's going to get us in the ballpark. It's going to get us close. So really, what we're going to use is Z for impedance. Z equals voltage squared over power. So let's write that out. Z equals voltage squared over power. And we'll use this in a distributed or constant voltage system. So let's say we're doing this with a 70 volt system. So that's where we're going to get our voltage, 70 squared. If I were doing a 100 volt system, this would be 100 squared. And let's say I'm tapping the loudspeaker at 7.5 watts. So that's going to give us our power, so 7.5 watts. So 70 squared divided by 7.5. And this would be for an individual loudspeaker. So 70, and I can hit the square key, divided by 7.5. And that gets us about 653 ohms worth of impedance. Again, this is going to get us in the ballpark. It's not going to be exact. But now I can actually measure the loudspeaker with an impedance meter and see if it's close to verify what I've predicted. Thank you, Cartoon Tom. So to recap, we use circuit theory to understand the relationships between power, current, resistance, and voltage. And then we use our Ohm's Law math to calculate that difference.